Hello everyone, I am Left, and welcome to a new series today called Teaching Concepts. This is going to be episode one, and it's going to be very relevant to all of the future episodes of this series that I'll put out. Just because it serves to, um, I don't know, like, put out what these terms mean that I'm going to be using in the videos, and stuff like that that you will need to know. So, this doesn't mean that the competitive analysis series is going any anywhere. Um, if anything, it serves to it, if anything it serves to enhance the competitive analysis uh, series in itself. I've been getting a lot of awesome feedback on that series, and I can't wait to continue it. So, this first video is going to serve to set the stage for the other ones and teach you guys some of the terms we're going to be using. So, without further ado, let's get right into this. First of two terms in this video, we're going to be talking about microplay. So. Maybe if you're a higher level player or you particularly like theory crafting and vainglory, you might know what microplay means, but chances are you don't. You've probably never heard of the word, and that's because microplay and its counterpart that we will be getting into later in the video are kind of vainglory's best kept secret. You don't really learn what these two things are and how, they, how different they are from each other and how you have to use them to win games until you actually like become vainglorious, start a team, and try to get serious. So microplay is your individual mechanics. It's things like, how well can I farm? Can I take that hero in a 1v1? How quickly can I clear jungle by myself? Am I able to block hooks and blast tremors? How well can I stutter step? Can I farm? Am I missing farm? It is all those little things that you can control. It's like, can I solo the Kraken with this hero without dying? Am I good enough to take down that weapon power Ringo as Crystal Vox? It's all sorts of things, little things like that, that you can control. So, microplay does not require a team. It's literally just knowing how to use the mechanics that you have learned and when to use them. It's like using Ringo's Twirling Silver when you want more attack speed. How well can I stutter step with that? Or knowing when to use Hellfire Brew and when not to use Hellfire Brew because the enemy team will crash down on you like a tsunami wave because you're not moving. So, that is basically what microplay is. It's the more simple of the two. So let's get into the second one of the two, macro play. So I said before that these two terms were Vainglory's best kept secrets. Well, macro play is even more of a secret than micro play. I didn't even know what macro play was until I was on a Vainglorious level team trying to do well in advance in the VIS Challenger series to get a chance at being in the Evil Eight. So they're really, really, really obscure terms that you don't learn until you get really high. And that's what I'm aiming to fix with this new series. Macro play is, on its simplest level, your rotations with your team and by yourself, knowing your jungle spawn timer as a jungler, knowing the kraken spawn timer no matter what drill you are, pushing and stalling your lane and knowing when to do each when it suits you, your vision control and your zone control using different heroes. So macro play is so much more complicated than micro play, just by its nature. Um, there's just so much stuff to unpack with micro with macro play that there just isn't with micro play. You there macro play is the overarching strategy of everything you do in Vainglory. Teams that have been hailed for their incredible micro or macro play in competitive are well, you probably know this already, but Invincible Armada. Even back in 2015, um 2015, Vainglory's first international tournament, the World Invitational in Korea. Um, I heard people, I heard people boasting about how great Invincible Armada's macro play was, and I was like, I don't know what that means. I'm in tier five, and I got this game like a month ago. But macro play is just the it's to put it in the most broad terms possible. It is the overarching goal of any move you make on the map, and. Pro teams that are talking and know each other and know their strategies are always looking to craft macro play that can outdo the opponent's macro play that they craft. Now, this is very easy if you're like, if it's like TSM queuing against a solo queue in Vainglorious, but it gets so much more complicated when you're, say, it's TSM versus Cloud9. Then you've got two dueling strategies going against each other and... I mean, it's usually whoever adapts the quickest to something that works wins. So that is just going to be a short little video today, guys, just to set up the rest of the things in the series. Going to do multiple videos on all sorts of different subjects, focusing on macro play. We're not going to be doing very many mic or maybe any at all micro play videos because you guys know how to stutter step and do things like that. 
if any of you people don't know how to basic attack, please comment down below and I will give you a free tutorial. So that's going to do it for me today, guys. Actually, you know what? I might actually come out with the first video of this series later today because I really want to and I have an idea. And when I have an idea, if I don't do it right now, it disappears from my mind forever. Perks of being INTP on the personality trait scale, but okay. See you guys.